Jim Miller back in the program here. He's got uh, Anthony Pettis coming up, UFC 213. July 8th in the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Big fight week. It's International Fight Week. Um, my email every day, I get like four or five different things from the Hall of Fame induction uh, um, to um, the fights going on the weekend, but Friday and Saturday to, I mean, so that weekend's a huge weekend. How do you deal with the extra fans? I mean, literally you walk out of your hotel room, you go down to the, you go downstairs to, to go to the bathroom to, to get, grab a quick cup of coffee. You're going to get swarmed. Do you, do you have to yeah. deal with extra fans? Does it bother you? Is it something you have to kind of stay away from or what happens? Um, you know, I've, I've on a lot of big cards and, and, uh, it's it's really not that bad. Um, it's there's definitely going to be more people there um, because you have the back to back cards and um, there's just a little bit more going on in in Vegas. But um, it really, you know, I kind of I kind of become a little bit of a hermit during fight week and just kind of sit in my room and and uh, you know <laughs> eat some fruit and some some raw nuts and stuff like that and. I really don't get out that much. I'm not the, I'm not the type that, that really does too much. I'll work out here and there and uh, I kind of just focus on the weight cut. So, um, for me, it really, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, it's, it's right on track where it, it has been in the past. You know, obviously I'd, I'd like it to be a little bit lower and, and, uh, you know, there's always, there's, there's always that wishing going on that, that, uh, Oh, well, I'd like to be three pounds, four pounds lighter, but, um, you know, it's it's right on track where it has been, so uh, I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at. I mean, you look at uh, uh, last weekend, Johnny Hendricks had problems. I think he missed weight five times, not at 170, and then moved up to 185 as a result. Um, just couldn't make weight anymore, and he's been cutting weight. Like, I've known that kid since he was 12 years old. Yeah. He's cut a lot of weight for a long time because of wrestling, and, and so he's, his body's kind of reacting, so I get it going up to 185 and, and, and doing okay. Did okay against Hector Lombard. Obviously lost to Tim Boach, but the big story wasn't the fact he lost to Tim. is the fact that He's having a hard time making weight. He didn't make weight again for 185. Um, is there ever t- any talk of you moving up to 170? Because it, it is such a difficult weight cut for you. And I have seen a couple of fights in the past. Come third round, you're not the same Jim Miller you used to be. You know, three, four years ago, you used to have a lot more energy going to third round. And now you're kind of like, I'm a little more tired than I used to be. Like, what's what's going on? That's my perception. It may not be what's actually happening in the cage. I'm watching on the couch from home. Mm-hmm. So is that perception correct that you are getting a little more tight in the third round? And are you thinking about at any point moving up to 70? You know, the, the last couple of years have been a little bit more difficult on me than, uh, than I had anticipated. Um, because, uh, I, you know, I've got Lyme disease and I, I think that kind of affected, uh, my weight cut. So, um, I started trying to take, take some weight off and, and, uh, when I went into the, the fight with, uh, Alves, I was, Fight week, I came in at 162 pounds, so I wouldn't have even had to cut weight in order to make the catch weight for the fight, and that's kind of what pissed me off about him missing weight. Um, but uh, I've I've tried to take a little size off to make it a little bit easier because I'm only five eight, you know, so it's I, I'm I'm the shortest lightweight, you know, uh, in the division. So going up to 70s, I'm just going to be giving up a little bit more size, and um, you know, I I. I I've spent my time in the room, uh, you know, and developing my skill set for, for bigger men, you know, my brother being my main training partner for a majority of my career. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable with the idea going up and, and I've, I've thought about it, but, uh, the weight did come off. Um, you know, I, I put a little bit back on, um, but I, for right now I'm comfortable at 155. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's definitely something that I that I have contemplated. Yeah, it's got to be tough. It's too, especially with family. You know, you got your family going on, and then you're like, well, you know, do I do I skip this whole meal? We're all having a great meal at, and I, I get to eat a salad and be miserable, or am I going to actually enjoy the meal with my family? You know, and 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 have fun. It, it's it's difficult too, especially you know, it, it's hard too because you're you're starting to advance in in your career to the point mm-hmm. where you're like. This is this is still my job, but it's still fun. But it's gonna, at some point, it's going to cross that line. We're like, now it's just a job, you know. Yeah. You want to keep it yeah. fun as, po- as long as possible. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm lucky because I, I was the I was the picky eater in my family. I, I still pretty much am, you know. I, I eat just about everything, but my siblings and my parents they eat absolutely everything. You know, there's there's pretty much nothing that they don't like. So, um, but my kids, my kids are phenomenal eaters. You know, they'll they'll. 
they'll eat anything. My my daughter, my oldest, she she just turned seven. It's like, all right, what do you want for your birthday dinner? She's like, I want salad with chi- grilled chicken on it. And it's like, you're seven years old. You're supposed to want pizza. <laughs> She's asking for a salad, so it's uh, my. It, it's not it's not that hard um, for my wife and I to to prepare the same things, and you know, like I I eat that they do, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty easy. I want to go back to your Lyme disease for a second. I read an article today. There's 300,000 new cases of Lyme, Lyme disease in America right now. Um, uh, Marcus Davis, uh, who's Tim Bo- Boach's coroner, his wife actually he moved from. Moved from a uh, 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 where is he Maine down to Maine. North Carolina because of the fact that she has Lyme disease and it's better for her health to be down in Carolina. Is it how many real adjustments did you have to make once you realized, hey, I've been feeling well. All right, it's Lyme disease. We finally figured this freaking thing out. So I know it took a minute to figure out what it was. Mm-hmm. How many adjustments did you really have to make? Diet, training, rehab, stuff like that. Um, you know the. The diet part wasn't that that big of a deal, you know. Lyme is is one of those things that it's it's uh it's a lot like a lot of the other um you know diseases and stuff that can that can attack people. Um, where the cleaner the diet, the better you're gonna do. Um, you know, staying away from the processed stuff, staying away from sugars and gluten and and dairy. So. You know, I, I still, I still, you know, eat dairy, um, and I eat gluten, and I eat sugar, but I, I've definitely stepped it back. Um, you know, and, and like the one of the things that, that's toughest about it is that um, it, it it's it's affected my nerves, you know. So and it affects my my uh, electrolyte balance. So I have to kind of be on top of my electrolytes and make sure that I'm I'm actually supplementing with B vitamins and stuff like that. And, um, that's that's kind of a you know it's not difficult but it is just an extra step that I have to take and um, it's it has been an adjustment it definitely has been at at my low point um, you know when I was training for the fight with Diego I barely trained for that fight uh, I mean I I could barely get out of bed um, and then it was you know once I, once I got on some medication it was a pretty quick turnaround where I. I started to feel better. Um, you know, I, I had gotten to the point where I was going up and down stairs sideways, you know, hanging onto the rail like a 90 year old man. And I thought it was just from training, um, you know, and that took a couple of weeks, but it, it, it went away. And all of a sudden it's like, I can like, you know, bound down the stairs, going, going downstairs to the basement. Like I always do like an asshole, you know, nearly, nearly fall down the stairs. But, um, it just came back and it's like, holy shit, you know, that was, that was because of something else. That wasn't just because of beating up my body for a decade. Um, but I still, I still don't, uh, I I can't, I can't train like I used to. So I have to train smarter and, um, you know, I've been focusing a lot more on technique and, and, uh, unfortunately I kind of stepped away from my strength and conditioning a little bit. Um, just because it, it would, that extra little bit, that extra, you know, two, three workouts a week, really kick my ass, you know? So, um, I, I'm still getting in, you know, some sprints and runs and stuff like that, but I'm just, I'm not lifting like I used to. So I've definitely felt a change, you know, over the last year or so, you know, year and a half, but, uh, I've also improved, you know, and, and I, and I, and I know that I'm in good shape. I know that I can go for hard for 15 minutes. And, um, and I know that even if it sucks, I'm still going to do it and I'm still going to push as hard as I can push. But you were talking about Lyme disease and, and, and I actually read, a thing where some kid, and this is on the East Coast, where now they're buying chickens to eat the ticks to stop the Lyme disease. Like, I mean, uh-huh. whatever. Some kid was just playing in his backyard and got Lyme disease just playing in his backyard. It yeah. is a pretty significant thing. And I'm actually really surprised to hear how normal it is for you and nonchalant you are about it now because you've kind of like, I figured out what it is. I'm on medication. I got to be, I got to train smarter. And that, that's just kind uh-huh. of your protocol. Um, did you ever figure out how you got it? Is there any one, like, did you find Plan Zero? No, you know, it, it, uh, I, I live in farm country, man, you know, and, and I hunt and I fish and I've got dogs and, um, you know, I've, I found a couple years ago, you know, I, I found more ticks on me in my yard than when I'd be out in the woods. Um, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. And, and, and 
the the tick doesn't have to stay on you that long. This is the these are the things that like we kind of just found out because I had always thought that oh okay the you know the 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 wives' tale about it was that the tick had to be attached for three days and all that stuff. Um, it's as little as like fifteen minutes, you know, and and the 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 baby the nymph stage of the of the deer tick is the one that's most likely to give you Lyme disease, and they're about the size of a poppy seed. So it's like for that to for that to crawl on you and bite you and uh, be there for a couple minutes and then just either fall off or whatever. Um, who the hell knows? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the scary part about it, you know. And, and uh, it's yeah, it's it, it's pretty crazy because you can get a lot of different uh, symptoms from it. And since I found out that I had it and and I you know went public with it, uh, I found out a lot of people that I know have it. And I recently just found out that guy that I was, you know, that I'm friends with, he just found out he has it. One of my students at the gym just, just, uh, got diagnosed with it. It's, um, it's, it's crazy, you know, and it's, it's the biggest thing is to keep your, your, your pets, you know, that they're fleeing tick stuff up to date and, uh, you know, check yourself, check your kids and, and, and just kind of make a habit of it because anytime you're outside, you know, something could crawl on you. Does, uh, did you have to spray your yard or anything? Because you have kids. You have kids that are going to be playing yeah. outside. Like, did you start spraying your yard or doing anything like that to stop it? Um, I was actually just talking to my wife about it. You can. Uh, there are a couple things that you can do. You can actually spray like the little nematodes, the little tiny couple cell organisms or whatever the hell they are. Uh, they actually like kind of burrow into the ticks and kill them. But uh, you can do a couple different things. Bird houses, you know. Um, you can get chickens. Unfortunately, my dogs would probably eat the chickens. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chickens and bird dogs. Just there. It's not gonna. It's not. Gonna, no. All right. Let's let's get off your disease. Let's talk about Anthony Pettis. Yeah. This is this is the guy you got facing you. Um, first, take me through the reaction when they called and said, "Hey, Anthony Pettis, your next opponent." What what was that first feeling like when you heard that? Um, excited. You know, Anthony's. You know, he's a former champion. He's he's. Uh, he's he's very well respected in the game and and um you know i have wanted to fight him for a while you know i mean when when the wc guys first came in i i, I wanted to fight him and um you know now i get my opportunity so it's it's uh i'm, I'm excited for it. i i i love these fights i love the you know we were just talking about it loving the loving the loving to suffer you know what I, I like being pushed inside the octagon you know i i uh it's great to go in and just steamroll somebody and come out, you know, uh, unhurt and stuff like that. But, uh, I, I, I do enjoy the grind of it. I do enjoy the, the, the tough fights and, and, uh, you know, I, I still want to dominate my opponent and, and, and make him look bad. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's always exciting to go in there against somebody that is dangerous. Is it, um, uh, is it more satisfying now that, that uh, uh, you're able to fight Anthony Pettis at this stage of your career? Would you have liked to have fought him, you know, three or four years ago when you first like, hey, I want to get a hold of Pettis? Um, it it really doesn't matter to me. You know, it it would have been good. It would have been uh, kind of nice to stay on track. You know, a, a few years ago and and uh, and do what I know I'm capable of doing. But um, you know, we we. We got the call. We get to meet up, and and uh, you know I'm going to make the most of it. Jim, thanks so much for coming on here. I know it's nine thirty at night for you. You gotta you gotta get to bed. I know you got early morning tomorrow, man. Thanks so much. I can't wait to watch this fight. For me, this is this is one of the better fights in the card. Obviously, I always enjoy when you fight, but this is also two guys that aren't going to look for to ride their bikes. They're not going to look to to find a way out of the rounds and kind of kill time. These are guys. Both guys are going to look to fight, and you guys are going to stand there and you got to fight. And it's going to be a very technical. A very technical fight, but it's going to be a fight. And I love watching those things happen. And guys like, let's just do it, see what happens. If I, if I lose, you know, uh, I buy you the beer. If you lose, you buy me the beer. That's it, you know. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Jim, thanks so much, man. Have a great rest of your training camp. Have a great time in Vegas. We'll talk later. All right. Have a good one, buddy.